Thanks very much. Sprint and roll training, or SIT, consists of brief bursts of exercise performed at a super maximal intensity interspersed with periods of recovery. The exercise interval is performed in an all-out manner or at a power output that is greater than that obtained at a VO2 peak test. And one common form of SIT that you might be familiar with is repeated wing gates, where one would perform a single wing gate sprint at 7.5% of their body weight, would then have four minutes of recovery, and this would be repeated for a total of four to six times. Our laboratory and many other laboratories have shown that short-term sit, or two to six weeks of training, can increase aerobic capacity as measured by VO2 max, can increase muscle oxidative capacity as measured by the maximal activity of citrate synthase, and can increase glycemic control using a variety of methods. But one thing that is limited within the literature is whether sex-based differences exist in the response to sit, as there has only been a few comparisons between men and women in the training response. One study to look at this response in both men and women was done by Metcalf and colleagues, where they employed a six-week design involving two 20-second all-out sprints in each single exercise session. And despite finding similar improvements in VO2 peak, these authors found a divergent response when they looked at insulin sensitivity as measured by an oral glucose tolerance test. The men on your left and the re-hit group is our sick group, and there's an increase in men's insulin sensitivity following training, where there is no change in women. These data are consistent with data from our laboratory using continuous glucose monitoring and, as well as a six-week sit training intervention. And we also looked at GLUT4 protein content and found that while both men and women increased their GLUT4 protein content following training, that men on your left again did so to a significantly greater extent. Another potential area that there might be sex-based differences in the response to SIT involves muscle protein synthesis. Scalzo and colleagues used D2O to measure mo muscle protein syn synthesis over three weeks of Wingate-based SIT and found that in the men, which are the open bars, and the females, which are the closed bars, there was a greater new fraction in mixed muscle for the men compared to women, as well as in the cytosolic fraction, and there tended to be a greater mitochondrial fraction in men compared to women. And so based on these data, these authors suggested that men have greater rates of muscle protein synthesis as well as mitochondrial biogenesis compared to women over three weeks of SIT. While these limited observations are suggestive of potential sex-based differences to SIT, they lacked uh, control for menstrual cycle phase as well as they did not control for baseline fitness relative to kilogram of fat-free mass, which is best practice when comparing men and women. We also had limited information on these types of very low volume SIP protocols and whether men and women differ in their acute response. And this might help explain why we might have potential sex-based differences in the training adaptations. And so the purpose of my first PhD project was to examine the acute metabolic response to SIT in men and women. And for the purposes of today's data, we hypothesized that women compared to men would have an attenuated increase in mRNA expression for genes linked to skeletal muscle remodeling following SIT based on the fact that we're seeing a blunted training adaptive response. We recruited sedentary individuals, eight men and eight women, matched them for age as well as VO2 peak based on kilogram of fat-free mass. And we tested all of our women in their mid-follicular phase of their menstrual cycle. And none of our women were taking oral contraceptives. Our subjects were familiarized with our SIP protocol, which involved a two-minute warm-up, a 20-second sprint at 5% of body weight for a total of three times with two minutes of recovery in between. And this is consistent with a protocol that we've used in a training design that has shown sex-based differences in glycemic control. We obtained a muscle biopsy prior to the SIP protocol. We then had our subjects complete our SIP protocol and obtained a muscle biopsy immediately after the third sprint and we obtained a final biopsy at three hours post-exercise. And during the SIMP protocol, our men and our women had similar mean power outputs when calculated relative to fat-free mass, as well as they had a similar heart rate response, so a similar percent of their maximal heart rate at the end of each sprint. So my results for today are presented in full change relative to baseline, and baseline is our dashed line. Our men are in our dark bars and women are in our open bars, but we ran our two-way ANOVA on our mRNA content, so not the full change, in order to account for any potential sex-based differences in baseline expression. 
looking at various genes involved in skeletal muscle remodeling, an asterisk shows a main effect of time, and a dagger represents a sex-specific effect. We looked at PGC1-alpha, a major regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis, and found that SIT increased the expression of PGC1-alpha to a similar extent in men and women. And this increase in our expression for PGC1-alpha was consistent with other interval exercise protocols that we've used that have contained a much larger volume of exercise. We also looked at MyoD, a myogenic regulatory factor involved in the differentiation of satellite cells, and again found a similar response in men and women with about a threefold increase following SIT. We measured the mRNA expression for genes known to be involved in the regulation of muscle protein breakdown and found atrogen 1, FOXO3, and MRF1 had a significant exercise induced increase in the mRNA expression. However, atrogen 1 had a sex specific effect where at three hours post exercise, men had a greater mRNA response uh, or expression compared to women. And we also looked at VEGFA, a factor involved in angiogenesis, and again found a threefold increase following SIT, but no differences between our men and women. We also want to look at various genes involved in substrate metabolisms. These have shown to have divergent responses with endurance exercise in men and women. GLUT4 protein content expression, or mRNA expression, only increased in women, although it's very slight, where there's no change in our men. Hexokinase increased in both men and women to a similar extent. And PDK4, which inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase, increased following our SIP protocol, again to a similar extent in men and women, but you can notice the quite variable response in our women. Lipoprotein lipase increased only in women compared to men, and there was greater mRNA expression for LPL at three hours post-exercise compared in women compared to men. And then finally, HSL increased following our SIP protocol to a similar extent in both of our men and our women. These comparisons in men and women are novel, so they have not been done following high intensity exercise um, in a sex specific way. And just to reorient you, we found a sex specific effect for atrogen one, where men had a greater response compared to women. And we had a sex specific effect for GLUT4 and LPL, where women were demonstrating a greater response compared to men. We also looked at a main effect for sex and found that men had greater mRNA expression across all time points for FOXO3, and women had greater mRNA expression across all time points for hexokinase 2. So the take home points from these data are, it shows the potency of high intensity interval exercise where our protocol only involved three 20-second all-out sprints and shows how one minute of intense intermittent exercise increases the expression of genes involved in skeletal muscle metabolism and remodeling. So it's a quite potent stimulus. We believe, although we do see those three sex-specific responses, that the gene expression response is largely similar. I presented some various genes today, but we also looked at other mitochondrial gene expression and found a similar response in our men and women. So overall, we think it's quite similar, but we do recognize that our three-hour time point provides a limitation as it might not be the optimal window to look at all these expressions of, of genes. As well as, like we heard this morning, you can only infer so much from our RNA expression, and we need to look at protein content as well. And based on the fact that we see a largely similar response, we believe that the metabolic basis for the reported sex-specific responses I showed you earlier over a training intervention remains to be determined. It's also important to note that we need more comprehensive studies that control for menstrual cycle phase as well as initial fitness in order to determine whether, in fact, these sex-based differences to SID exist. I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Martin Gabala, as well as all my lab members and the participants for NSERC and GSSI for, for providing the funding that made this project possible, and the Physiological Society for their support through a travel grant in support of attending this meeting. Thank you.